Hazo is finally out, and this is an honest look at how he works with different teams and weapons at Constellation Zero. So, here's exactly what you need to know about him in this showcase video. Hazo has honestly surprised me in several ways as I spent almost a week on the media server figuring out many of his builds and playstyles. At first I got hyped, then disappointed, then happy again, and so on. But I believe the best way to show you what I think about him is by first talking about his damage potential. Keep in mind I am showcasing here a C0 Hazo at level 90 with all talents raised to level 9. Now this guy is a catalyst user, but apparently he instead prefers to use his martial arts up close and personal. Which is funny because his normal attack multipliers are just not great. Even when I built a team around him with Yunjin and Benny to boost the damage, which I'll talk about later in the video. But while the normal attack damage is lackluster, the best selling point about the catalyst still remains true here. These attacks by default are elemental, and they can cause swirls, which in some scenarios will become his greatest asset in several teams, and more importantly, they will be crucial for his elemental skill. But before I talk about his skill, let's first take a look at his burst. It can deal a decent chunk of damage, but it's nothing amazing. Obviously I'm using here an unrefined Frostbearer just to show free to play numbers, although keep in mind if you do decide to build him with elemental mastery, this barely matters at the end of the day. In fact, one of cool little things about his burst is that it does offer crowd control. I wouldn't call it reliable, because I never feel like I can group enemies consistently, especially when compared to other animal crowd controllers, but otherwise, this is a really cheap 40 energy cost burst that does a little bit of everything. Finally, this is where things get really interesting, his elemental skill. Essentially, this is Hazo's biggest source of damage, although the game does try to fool you when you first use it and see a pitiful 14,000 hit, but this can quickly change because by building up his declension stacks, the damage will go up, up, up and up. So, how does it work? Well, you can keep an eye on this symbol here, how many stacks he has, but there's essentially two ways so you can build them. The first option is by simply holding down his skill button, which will slowly build up the stacks. And unless you want to exchange your precious time in the abyss for some stylish posing, this isn't really going to be viable. Which is why the other way, and probably the main way how you can gain stacks is by causing swirl reactions thanks to his passive talent. Now even if it says there's a 0.1 second cooldown, the real cooldown is going to be the dreadful ICD. It's not like you can just do 4 normal attacks to swirl and immediately reach max amount of stacks? No, no, the good old ICD prevents you from achieving this. Thankfully, you can always create a swirl reaction with this charge attack. There is no ICD on it, similar to how Hutel works where you can always vaporize her charge attacks. It's actually something that I spent a lot of time figuring out, because as you can see, without the stacks, the damage is laughable. And yet, you have to consider, should you spend your time and skills potential cooldown on building up the stacks for better damage, or just use it immediately with less stacks? Well, I'll be able to reveal the answer later in the video, but for now, let's talk about big numbers. By using a fully refined Wit Sith and a team of boosters, I was able to go from 135 all the way to almost 200,000 damage. There's definitely room left for improvement here. I don't have a C4 gene who can shred the animal resistance by 40%, but nonetheless, that's a pretty big number for a C0 character. But is this going to be a realistic scenario when playing in the Abyss? No, not really, but on the flip side, I was able to score 100,000 crits by using Wit Sith when the skill had max amount of declension stacks, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. Still, what I don't like about this talent is that it pushes enemies away, kind of like causing an overload reaction, which is definitely not something you want to happen when using a melee character, especially if you actually use these charge attacks to build up these declension stacks faster, which can really take a toll on your stamina bar. But overall, normal attack damage is disappointing, however, they remain crucial for building up declension stacks and causing swirl reactions. The burst damage is average but has decent crowd control utility. And then there's the elemental skill. Without any stacks it's beyond disappointing damage, but if you can get 4 of them built up fast, then it deals nearly twice as much damage when compared to his burst. By the way, this declension remains on him even if we switch out, so as you can imagine, quite often when you complete a rotation and switch back to him, he will more than likely have all 4 stacks built up already and you can immediately unleash his skill at max potential. But I think now is probably the best time to talk about his team comps. I tested out a lot, and I mean a lot of different team comps and builds with Hazo. So in all of these showcases, keep an eye on the bottom of the screen to see his build stats. Now what's really both exciting and exhausting about him is that there's a lot of ways how you can build him, and more than a few teams are really good with him. So let's first start with free to play taser comp. Hazo here is using unrefined Mapamari, and he's built entirely with elemental mastery. Now the thing about taser is that it's really good when using EM builds, especially because Hazo is the driver here, meaning you dump every single skill in 
and burst with all teammates, and then you finally switch to him and start beating up everyone. It's not going to be easy to see his own personal animal damage because it will be really low. However, his swirls and potentially electrocharged reactions he causes will be constantly popping up on screen, and as long as there are multiple enemies, everyone's going to be in real danger. What's really interesting is that I actually went and used Magic Guide, which is a 3 star catalyst that offers more EM than Mapamari, and I was surprised to see that they both perform very similarly. So if you go for this build, you can save up some resources and use it instead. I then also used a fully refined Sacrificial Fragments, and the extra skill activation basically allowed me to forget I ever need to worry about the Burst's energy, as cheap as it already is. And it also allowed me to cause X-ray reactions. But this is where Elemental Mastery Viability ends. It's a niche build and can be very costly if we talk about in terms of resin efficiency, since you'll potentially need 3 pieces of Verdescent Renier with EM. And more importantly, you can't really see his big damage numbers because of the way EM builds work. And if we want to punch and kick our enemies really hard, it's time to go the usual route. So, moving onwards, I am now using a traditional damage dealer build, which is the good old VV Forset and the usual Attack Sands, Animal Goblet, and Critical Rate or Damage Circlet. The weapon of choice is Witsith and the team comp is National. I honestly expected this team build to be much worse, but I got pleasantly surprised with the amount of damage Hazel is able to dish out, especially if you can get one of those two good Witsith buffs. However, the problem is going to be like with any of his teams I talk about in this video. If it's the first rotation, meaning you're starting the chamber, it's probably probably going to be pretty painful executing it, since most of these rotations start with somebody else and ends with Hazo, which means the moment I swap to him, he doesn't have any declension stacks. So now I have a choice. Do I just use his skill with maybe one or two stacks by quickly building them up, or should I just go all the way in and try to max it out before unleashing it? The way I found it is that I open up with a burst, then do a couple of charge attacks which have no ICD as I mentioned before, so the swirls can save me a precious second or two, and then hopefully, by the time he unleashes the maximum damage skill, Benny's burst and Witsit buffs are still there. Like, I can already see why the developers literally allow Hazo to gain one stack immediately if you unlock his first constellation, because this is how I want to play him personally. I want to see his Heartstopper skill deal massive damage, and I want to make sure it can be achieved efficiently on the first rotation, especially if I'm using Witsit, because you don't want to waste such a massive buff that doesn't come back until third rotation later. Point is, if you can find a sweet spot between the big buffs and how good you are at managing his declension stack, then he'll be able to achieve some really great results. That's basically the life of Hazo if you use his traditional damage dealer build, which by the way also works super well in taser comps. Now, I also tried him in Freeze. I mean, he is decent here. It definitely doesn't help he offers little to no grouping. But on the bright side, his elemental skill will not push the enemies away if they are frozen. And surprisingly enough, I kind of enjoyed using this team comp of Yelan, Kaya, and Rosaria, which made it easier to just freeze targets with Hazo's melee attacks. But let's talk about some exotic teams. The first one is Hyper Hazo. Since he is already always the last one to be in the rotation, let's just pump with buffs every single talent of his and see where that gets us. The result? Kind of lackluster, not gonna lie. He kind of suffers from the same problem as Xiao, who is an animal damage dealer, and that is, there's not a lot of ways to boost the damage. But unlike Xiao, who has really high raw damage, even with Yunjin, Benny Boy, and one of the support units, his normal attacks still kind of remained pitiful and became even more painful to watch when I tried to see how good he is against single targets. Finally, one of the builds I mentioned in my last video was Thundering Fury. I don't want to get too much into the details here of how it works. You can watch that video, but basically it boils down to this. By using him in a electrocharged team with some help from another animal unit like Kazuha, you can essentially reduce his skills cooldown quite a few times and in result, I was able to squeeze out most of the time two skills instead of one he could normally do. But I don't really believe you should go and farm Thundering Fury Domain just for the sake of this build. And also, the viability is tied to essentially one team and you also need several enemies for this to work. In fact, if you really want to activate his skill two times in a row, I actually just tried out to see what it would feel like if he had sacrificial fragments with a normal damage dealer build, it's honestly pretty good, especially in taser teams, since the extra EM from the weapon substat also helps with reaction damage. But overall, many teams, many builds, and in my opinion, if you want to stick with a flexible build that will work in majority of teams, just use these Verdescent Forset with the usual attack, animal, and critical rate or damage main stat artifacts. So what do I think about this Mr. Detective slash martial arts monk? Well, truth be told, 
It's actually refreshing to see an Inazuma 4-star that works right out of the box, deals considerable amount of damage, and most importantly, this is only his C0 potential, which to be fair, a lot of people can easily max out 4-star character constellations as time goes on. But I still want to talk about things that I don't like about him. First of all, why in the world a melee character knocks away his targets with his skill and then you need to spend the stamina to chase them after, unless it's a freeze team we're talking about? This becomes especially painful if you want to utilize his charge attack to cause guaranteed swirls. But this guy isn't Hu Tao. He stands in one place instead of gaining mobility with charge attacks. So after using a couple of them, followed by his skill, you're gonna see the stamina bar going red pretty often if you knock your targets away. The other issue I have with him isn't really his own fault, but more of animals. There's not a lot of ways to boost animal damage, VV Shred does not reduce enemies' animal resistance, and only few characters like C4 Gene can actually reduce it. The reason I mention this is because Hazo's single target damage is kind of hard to achieve. Sure, if you can unload at least 150k damage from your skill in burst, then it's fine, but this becomes way more better if multiple enemies are involved. And don't forget in order to first achieve this damage, at least on the first rotation, you'll need to spend some time building up the declension stacks and have something like Witsith active. But all in all, I'm just trying to be a little bit critical here, because otherwise I'm just having a ton of fun using this punchy detective. I suspect many others like me will lean towards his regular damage build, where you can see him punch out big numbers, especially when you start getting on him more constellations, which by the way, I am planning to make a video about on this very soon. So if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, as I expect to see this guy grow into something more amazing. Now you also might be wondering, what about the sugary sucrose? Uh, well, it wouldn't be fair to compare him to my C6 Sucrose, but for now, if we look at them both from C0 perspective, I would say they both more or less are the same, especially since he can also boost Elemental Mastery by 80 points from one of his passive talents, although Sucrose can boost by a lot more points, and she obviously has better crowd control than him, but I'll probably need to spend more time with him and make a video comparing both of them sometime later in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, I know my release schedule has been very slow lately, but I've honestly been dealing with some real life stuff for the past few months and I hope to get back with more content than ever especially now that Sumeru is around the corner. As always I appreciate your support, thanks for watching till the end and I will see you very soon.